oppressing minorities, a weapon of the Awami League. Not only is it unacceptable to attack and abuse minorities anywhere in the world, but to do so in Bangladesh and to use this to rally the attention and support of the international community in the name of protecting democracy, minority rights, abhorrent and deceitful. The Bangladeshi media is made to fail in accurately reporting these attacks, hence not highlighting the actual culprits of such crimes and abuse. It has continued to present these acts to be carried out by members and supporters of the opposition parties in Bangladesh. It is shocking to say the Awami League not only be the blame of the BMP and its allies such as jamaat -e islami but also framing such individuals and voices. Victims may have been found in Shatkira, Jashor, Netrokuna, Silet, Dinajpur, Maimanshing, Bagirhat, Noakali, Pabna, Tangail and Potwakali to name a few. Various local and national media coverage in Bangladesh, both print and electronic, have covered these issues rightly asking the reasons behind these attacks and who should bear responsibility. The question is, is it the government in power, the army league or the opposition? Members of the opposition, particularly the Jamaat and its student wing Shibir, is widely blamed for these attacks. However, in reality this seems not to be the case. On BBC, the leader of the Hindu Buddhist Christian Unity Council in Bangladesh, advocate Shoborto Chaudhry, fully detests this narrative being sold to Bangladeshi citizens and responsible nations the world over. He said the idea that Jamaat Shibir are attacking minorities have become a slogan. However, in many cases, clear evidence is available that our Malik leaders are involved in recent spree of attacks on the minority. One of the popular channels, the DTV, reported a man by the name of Mohendra Rozon Dev, a Hindu from Silet, was attacked by Aumilik thugs. Similarly, the local Hindu puja committee filed a case against Awami thugs for attacking their temples in Begum Gonj, Upojila of Noakali district. Abu Said Khan, a minister of information, stated. The ex-state minister Shamsul Haq Tuku threatened local Hindus with circumcision should they refuse to vote for the current government in power, the Awami League. One of the attackers, Mithu, linked to the government's party, was witness in attacking of Hindus as well as taking part in a government rally in his local area. Mr. Nurul Kabir, editor of a famous daily newspaper, The New Age, stated our Malik candidate Mr. Wahab's thugs carried inhumane violence and anarchy on minorities in Malupara, Jashod district. This was due to his defeat against another our Malik candidate, Ranjit Kumar Dev. This and other such incident no doubt reflects the true values of the current government and its regime all over Bangladesh. Whilst deceitfully calling for the support of the international community in protecting democracy, human and minority rights in Bangladesh. Women are not spared either in these attacks as old as Rani, a widow from Kolapara of Potwakali district who filed a case for assault and was injured by a man called Ripon Bishash, the son of an Awami League MP. We ran for our lives and my children were too scared to return. We built this small house with lots of difficulty. Now we have lost everything. These attacks are so deplorable, it includes even young girls. A teenager was not spared and abducted in the district of Feni. The conscious and truthful men and women in Bangladesh are trying to expose the real truth behind these lies and deceits. The Bangladesh Human Rights Commission's chairman, Dr. Mizanur Rahman states, the government cannot avoid responsibility merely blaming Jamaat Shibir. I got the list of the attackers provided by the local Puja celebration councils, so don't tell me those government stories. 
Even the business of minorities have not been spared by the thugs of the Awami League. Just listen to victim Oshim Shadu about his shop. He directly holds Awami League student party members responsible for this crime. Monindra Rajon Dev from Silet, in speaking to the media, was a victim of the current government's spree of crimes on minority. His tendon was cut by our league thugs. <laughs> These abuses on minorities for political gains are so sickening, even their place of worship is not spared. A Jubilee activist, a member of Aomi students, was caught while stealing an idol from a temple in Maimunsi. The list of examples and stories of minorities' rights being abused in Bangladesh is endless. Each one deserves to be mentioned on its own. It is shocking to know that these are being carried out by members of the Awami League. <laughs> the government in power desperately using the guise of democracy and protection of minority rights as a tool to legitimize its time in office. <laughs> It is shocking that these crimes in the last five years have taken place in huge numbers and usually no culprits are found or arrested though minority victims have attempted to call the police and law enforcers. Responsible media coverage and journalism cannot fall short through government media control, deceit and geopolitical interests thereby allowing the voices of such victims to become a mere political tool. It is unfortunate once again that Jamaat Islami is being linked to such heinous crimes. People praying here in the local mosque agree with the cleric. They want to maintain the communal harmony. The violence is blamed on the opposition parties, mostly the Jamaat Islami. Jamaat Islami in Bangladesh is a peaceful political party and they don't encourage any violent activities. But people who are responsible for these incidents don't belong to Jamaat Islami. They are members of other political parties. In its belief in democracy, human and religious rights, in a statement has called for the formation of an independent inquiry commission under the supervision of the United Nations to identify the perpetrators and bring them to justice. It has also requested that CCTV and close security is provided for these communities to ensure their immediate protection. The lead opposition, the BMP, has clearly stated that the Awami League is responsible for these crimes and is using this to divert attention away from the recent undemocratic one-party election. For further information, please visit www.humanrightsconcern.org.